Hello everybody, I'm Balgan Strongdrake, famed and royal dwarven streamer, and it's time once again to return to Nangrim. It's been a bit of a while, hasn't it? Now once again we have this important announcement. The following experience is not a fully fledged demo nor a vertical slice. However, it contains some selected features in alpha state to give an impression of the look and feel of the final game. Main features like combat or the crystal garden are not yet available in this build. Now, it is at this time of the year, when the veil between the world of the living and that of the dead grows thin. But we feel our ancestors grow close. And every young braid and beard huddles round the fireplace and murmurs prayers or sings songs in honour of those who went before. For they might just... They came touch. as a whisper. Words so quietly wrapped that the truth may not hear. Until that whisper became a growl, impossible to ignore, impossible to outvoice. We were not prepared. That which came upon us lied far beyond our imagination. Our plans, strategies, defense in vain. The accomplishment of generations, the history of families, their joy, their sorrow, Shattered in the blink of an eye. We stood strong. Axes and hammers drawn. Our army. The guardians with their best beards. Every beard. But the great gates fell. And what followed after soon sealed our fate. In the depths of the mountains, a stone beard uses a manna Lee stone's glow to separate night from day, darkness from light. Our glow has not yet gone out, and we will not make room for the darkness. In the midst of the chaos, I hid away our most precious treasure, and in this hour that I know my time has come, I will pass this world knowing that victory is ours, if not today, certainly in a tomorrow that will soon come. By the names of the fallen kings, may Taldoran give us his strength. Turn to Nangrim, a dwarven adventure. <laughs> Had to be done. Had to be done. Uh, what? What happened? So, the keen-eyed among you young'uns might have noticed that on the load screen. The statues had taken on a certain skull-like visage, and a blue glow emanated from their faces. It's cold. I should look out for a shelter. <laughs> I must oh, have brought so some cold. equipment with me. Let's try and get inside. I need to find it first. Now, the kind and generous developers behind this game... Back, back. I'll need this for sure. ...have decided to make the playable teaser available to I've got the handle anyone of an with axe. Steam account. Now, if Taldoran means me well, <laughs> there might be a chance I'll find the corresponding head. Uh, all right, Tal, dear. Steady on. I'm speaking here. Yeah, so the entire demo is available for the whole month of October. So if you want to go to the Steam page and play it yourself, you're welcome. You're more than welcome. 
I'll leave a pinned comment with a link, you know, down below this video. And yeah, I've got a bit of a dry throat at the moment. Sorry about that. The way leads over that bridge, but it's so desolate. It's even missing some planks. Now, there's no way we're going to make it across that bridge in one piece. So, let's do something about it, eh? There's some planks here. Some good old wooden planks. They will do the job. Right. Fair enough. Lovely jubbly, bish bash bosh. Bridge is fixed. It's not perfect, but it'll do. It'll do. Those barricades block the way. Now here we have another boarded up entrance. That's going to be a bit of a problem. But what's this over here? Ooh. Something doesn't like us crossing. Those barricades block the way. What here was blocking my motion? Now, I, I just have to combine those two. Let's see if we can put these two things together back where they belong. We'll do it for now. And now, obviously, it's time for our friend Taldir here to reenact his favorite scene from The Shining. Here comes Taldir. Here he comes indeed. Not a lot could keep him away from that door. Let's keep moving. Finally. Now. Let's see what's behind that door. Let's head inside and out of the cold and see what lurks in the Citadel today. As you can see again, the blue glow from the mouths of the statues. It's a little uncanny, isn't it? You could almost say eerie. And also the blue glow down there around the doorway. Well, I think once we get inside, we'll see what all that might be about. It is October, after all. I should take a look around. I spy a spider! <coughs> Die, spider! There may be other eight-legged freaks lurking about here. Oh! Ah. Got him. And another comes. They don't seem to have a death animation yet. As you can see, the place is suffering from a manifestation of pumpkins, or rather jack-o'-lanterns. Easy. Come on, you. There we go. And these pumpkins turn to follow me. Wherever I look, they go all around the room. I see you. Where? Ah. So it would appear there is some degree of combat in the game. However, we don't have a full damage system yet. Um, the enemies don't have death animations. You, get lost. Leave me alone, I'm trying to explore. There we go. Now, hopefully, there won't be many more of those crawling out to give me a hard time. <laughs> Here, a bagon. Could you please prioritize my order? Also, this time, please do it yourself. It's the second time that Dandaron has bound the book, and again the pages fell out flying through the citadel. I know you're not only a giz. 
Iskriban, but also a teacher, and that you believe that something will come out of that stone, but I'm not going to tolerate a book that is falling apart again. There are also still pages spread around the citadel. Teach them a lesson and let Dandoron gather them together. Tardagon Fringenar. Fringenar I have no great. clue when this was written, but... Maybe I can find Tardagon or Bagon somewhere. Fringenar sounds like it might be a job title rather than a personal surname. Now what could this be? Here Frinbard, a lonesome warrior came wandering our kingdom. His garments were filthy and he half dead of thirst. He said the Nimbor mountains he had to climb. Foolish he is with the equipment that he has. Nay, a real dwarf would ever treat such a daring undertaking with a, with a cankered axe like his and boots worn out, allowing the cold to move in. Sent him off, I would have, but gracious as the heart of our king is, he advised us to accommodate him and prepare equipment for his departure. Argoran already made his famous delicious Frincentin pie, and Belastrian delivered boots of the finest fur as well as Shervil gloves from Eshgard. But how is he supposed to climb with just a lousy axe? Assigned by the king was Haldor to forge him the Snowbeard's famous axe, but how should it be? The drunkard has already passed out in the tavern. Ugh, why is Bordjal even getting served in the morning? Either way, I'll try to find out more and send you the details for the workpiece. And this axe can be crafted. It is a complicated recipe and the details are scattered about a bit and not easy to understand. I think it involves some complicated maths to get the correct proportions of ingredients. For now though, I'm heading around here on the balcony. These doors remain closed. These doors closed. But here, we see the body of a dwarf. A fellow beard or braid. Looks like a beard to me who's been here for quite some time with a couple of documents with him. Let's see what he has. Open duties. Get book fittings. Choose fabrics for girdle books. Transcribe fine grass Fargnas's book three times. Pick more of those red mushrooms. I love those mushrooms. Note to myself, clean up scriptorium before Bagon finds out about the mush spilling. Mushrooms or an actual mush? He's, he, he's um, sloshed up together. Letters. Ah. Here, Frimbard. Haldor's apprentice gave me some more details. The axe is called Winter Strike, with its light 34.8 royal pounds. It is perfectly made for such an adventure. Unfortunately, the exact recipe is unknown, and asking Haldor, well, allow me to say that this is not an option. He's drunk, remember? The apprentice says that its head is 33 and 4 fifths times heavier than its wooden handle. But what does someone like me know? It's up to a master blacksmith. It is up to a master blacksmith that the honour of the king might not get tarnished. The apprentice found a sketch in Haldor's forge. Oh, and not to forget the special alloy needed for this weapon, number in two, if I recall correctly. Only if I'd remember the name. Either way, don't use the expensive iron or wood. So, don't use the expensive iron, use normal iron, use normal wood, and a special alloy for two parts of the metal head that is 33 and 4 fifths times the weight of the handle. 
33 and 4 fifths comes very close to 34.8. So if we check how much a wooden handle of one or two parts of wood would weigh, it's then all about multiplying and working out what goes where. So this was Danderon. Unfortunately, it seems his duties have come to an end. Although perhaps in the afterlife, he might still think of the toil and trouble he went through. Trying to get everything done. Was he a dutiful servant? Did he grumble? Did he dislike his work? Perhaps we may be able to commune with the ancestors and ask him. Although it's not always easy to tell. Although these great jack-o'-lanterns certainly give me the spooky impression the ancestors are near. Let's pick some more of those mushrooms. Room. And here we have a large key. A key to the scriptorium. Well then, fortunately Taldir can read. That is the door to Brimfels. This is the door to the mine. Here the door to the scriptorium. And here the door to the forge. So let's head inside. And open the door. Once again, statues of the ancestors greet us on the load screen. Making us feel welcome and at home. But also giving a stark reminder the ancestors have passed away and are naught but bones now in their tombs. Some of which will even have faded and crumbled away. Well then, dusty books and rotten chairs. Here we have our first song. Dark won't get me out of here. Come on, Tal dear, don't interrupt yourself when you're singing. The mines are weighed with silver ore. The caverns gems shine the dark. As once foretold by ancient lore. Under the Mountain thrones are under the northern mountain. 
I like the fact that these songs are presented and Taldor sings them. He's getting back in touch with his culture, he's been far away in foreign lands for far, far too long. And now as he returns to Nangrim, he's picking up all the little bits and pieces that were just normal everyday stuff to him and now thinking, golly, I really miss this stuff, you know? And it's good to be able to be back in touch with my roots again. Let's open this chest. There's a spoon. Now here we have a number of things. Oh dear, looks like these people have been dead a long time. So if I'm putting everything together correctly, this must be Bagon. Dandaron, I hope you won't read this letter as it means I am dead and you are in danger too. Those voices from the mines. Something terrible is going to happen. The stone widows coming further up the tunnel. The storms. Not to mention the incident with Hendon. There is something going on, and I'm not talking about the cabal theories of those hidden stone cults. Danderon, I might just be losing my mind, but still, if you read that letter, please leave as far as you can. There's something coming. I will not abandon my post, but you are not bound to anything. You could grow into something big. Please don't waste your potential for us old beards. May Taldron watch over you. Bagon. And, and poor Danderon perished out there in the hall on the top of the balcony overlooking the central stone. I should go look at that, actually, before I completely forget. I heard a squeak of the hinges, sounded ominously like a spider. I'll have my axe at the ready when I get in there, just in case. Those little pests could be back, you know. And my throat still is rather dry after all. Where are you, little ones? Oh yes, our hero has a journey. A monolithic rock formation that seems to have been worked on by hand. Runes are carved into the stone. I think it's not the first time I've encountered one of these things. Maybe there is some hidden meaning behind them. We have a whole story of how Taldir came here from a far off land. And that will be worth delving into in the near future. For now though, let's go back into the scriptorium. It's the one with a key sticking out the door because Taldir apparently forgot to take it with him when he went inside. Ah, he'll be leaving doors open next. So. This then would probably be back on. Um, books. We have some details here, which we can read through and learn more of what Bagon may have been observing. Let's not do that just yet, though. Mm. Ah, the key to the mine. A key to the mine. Uh, y yes, Taldir, that's what I said. <laughs> Bagon's letter said something about a danger that emerges from the mines. I should go and explore that. I'll complete that book at Tardagons. Maybe this will help me find a way out of here. And if not, at least it sharpens my skills. I found Tardagon's book. 
It seems the script Bagon could not finish his work, as there are still some pages we're still missing. I think the training could help me find my way out of here. I should search for the missing pages and do the training. All right. Aha. Uh -huh. All right, I found the first page. Now let's see what this is all about. Even if you consider reading as a basic skill, being able to read with care is something that not every beard masters in his life. So let's look at that, shall we? Ah, that's completed already. Now, Tales and Legends of Arafin, Part 1. This document, if I recall correct, has a nice story of a dwarven family and a love that transcends even death. However, it's also rather tragic. It's a good read and I may devote an entire video to it on itself at some point in the near future. But there's plenty of pages, and with my throat being as it is, I'm not going to read it out now. Let's head outside, though, and go to that mine. And see what we can see. Oh, I think they all dipped and bobbed briefly there. Gave me the impression they were about to attack or something. I was thinking, oh no! What's this? So the mine is this way, isn't it? Yes. If, if any of you stopped watching before now and went off and grabbed the demo and started playing for yourselves, I really don't mind. In fact, I'd quite appreciate it. And if you stuck around, hey, that's great, you know? There we are. So there's a bit of a distorted camera wrench on area load. That's new with this build, I think. So let's just set foot out here a moment. And pick a few mushrooms. And we'll walk over this plank and pick some of these. And then we'll ask ourselves what this is. I can't chop wood with a rusty axe. I'm Indeed. sorry, rusty friend. If you're going to chop wood, use a proper axe. There it is. Nice big two-handed axe for wood cutting. Again, the combat system isn't fully implemented yet, but we do have some resource gathering. Let's head off into the mine. My throat's getting a bit better, by the way. That's good. An abandoned mine tunnel. What better place to find some ores? Or those looking for ores. Indeed. Well, since we are in a mine, I'm going to pick up this implement here. A pickaxe. One of the most reasonable things for us to acquire in this particular circumstance. Mm. Ooh. There's another jack-o'-lantern and a key. A key to the forge. I did not believe that old librarian. 
I thought that old buffer just buried his nose too far in his books and lost his mind. But as I'm lying here in my blood, by Calderon, was I wrong? They, or it, is coming from the deep tunnels. That stone widow did not act normal. Never have they come so close to the surface, nor did they hunt alone. It seems like something has driven them further up the tunnel. And that's all he was able to write before he sat. So he's the away. local mine overseer. Let's head off in this direction. Pick a few more mushrooms. Now the glow from the mushrooms can actually be quite good for lighting. All these torches are lit. I wonder who lit them. Perhaps it was ghosts. The page again. A forge cannot be fired without wood and all those precious objects and weapons cannot be crafted without ores. Gather them! Hey! So we want 10 gold, 10 iron, and 10 wood. Well now, let's meander back this way, shall we? And see what we can find. If the stone widow that did in this overseer is nearby, we'll want our trusty two-handed axe upon us. And it looks like he boarded up this tunnel to try and keep it at bay. Here we go. Right then. Let's get down here and see what's... what we're up against. What we're dealing with... Oh, that doesn't look good. Look at the size of that thing. Great skinny legs with angular knees. It's on its back though and it's not moving. What is this ugly beast? A giant stone widow has killed the mine overseer. A strange behavior even for this type of creature. There seems to be something down in the tunnels, but I can't go down there without equipment. Before I can start to forge something, I need to gather the necessary resources, which are... Um... Come on, Taldir. It's not that easy to forget, is it? Get that pickaxe out and get hewing at those walls. There we are. That's a start. Maybe even a bit of this as well, eh? Well, we've got our gold. Now let's go look for some iron. With any luck, this will be it. Just a little more. Just a little more ore. There's some over there, some over here. Right, and we're going to want some wood to feed the fire. For that, we'll want a good hefty chopper. And we might even want to sprint a little get out there quicker. Although out here there's no no roof. There's these cloud things and oh, it's cold. So cold up above the surface. And there's snow. A strange thing. You don't really get snow underground. Sometimes you might get ice. Or icicles. But snow? Snow tends to stay out on the surface. Let's hit some trees. There we are. Ooh, that's better. 
For now, let's head back inside out of the cold. Now, there are one or two little details I'm intentionally overlooking because it's more about just showing off the general experience. All in all, though, I think I'm nearly done here. Unless something new's been added. And that's worth finding out, right? Come on, load bar. We're nearly there. <laughs> so, back inside, and we're wanting to go to the forge. Not this one. This one? And another load bar faces us. That's okay, though. That's okay. Ah, the forge. Let's get to work. Now, back in the early days of playtesting, this forge area was the only area available to us at all. And it had some little details hidden on the wall with a secret crafting recipe hinted at. Well now. Lecture two, gathering resources. Here we are. Alloys containing iron. A radium is one platinum and presumably some iron. One or, I think it's two two iron to one platinum for a radium. And I think a radium is the special metal we need to craft the special axe. Next chapter. Now, as you have all the resources you need, it's time to head to the forge and start crafting. All right, let's find some crafting plans, some things we can make. Cup. A spoon, a light battle axe, and a treatise, The Art of Smelting. Now, this book sadly has some missing pages. We are apparently able to find these pages and add them back into the book later on, and we will gain more detail and more information or possibly even write pages of our own to add. Again, a missing page. But for example here, the bronze ally is very popular among dwarven smiths to create beautiful ornaments on weapons and shields. The bronze alloy consists of three parts copper and one part tin. Useful information. And even a little bit on the operation of the furnace itself. Here, we have a potato. And I believe we can bake the potatoes in the forge. Um, probably not on the anvil, but probably on the smelter or something. And we have two parts here of a broken key and a letter from a blacksmith. Duldarin, as much as I appreciate your ingenuity, welding a stone key with tin is not a permanent solution. That thing broke in two pieces as soon again as I lifted it from the table. Remember, keep an eye on the detail and you'll see which materials you can use. Concerning the stone key with its golden engravings, I guess that should be clear now, shouldn't it? Hmm. There's a broken stone keychain on the table. Maybe that letter is talking about that one. There is indeed. What do we want? Miscellaneous notes, no books. Plans, there we are. So. For the light battle axe, one wood, five iron, one bronze, one dur steel. 
And temperature level 3 for the forge. So. Wood. Iron. Tin ore. Copper ore. And door steel. Now this chest has unlimited resources for testing purposes. Obviously when it comes to full game resources will be much more limited. Oh, and I want some gold as well. There we go. Let's fire up the forge. All right, let's heat the furnace. The ore and needs smelting. Let's smelt some... Was it three copper to one tin? Or the other way around? I think that's it. Looks like a clump of waste. Oh, have I got it too hot? Hang on, that's not right. There we go. Great. It was too hot. Let's increase that temperature again. And go to the furnace. And add some more wood. And to the anvil. Um, we have a plan right here, don't we? There we go. Lovely. So now we have ourselves a nice light battle axe with which to head back into the mines. But I think I'm going to leave this episode here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, hello. Where'd the door go? Hold on. There it is. Wolf way over there. <laughs> His old dwarf's head got muddled. In which case, I'm definitely leaving this episode here. I hope you've all enjoyed this video, and please feel free to head on over to Steam and grab the demo for yourself to play for about for a bit. But for now, I'm going to wish you all goodbye. Demo's available till the end of the month. Hope you all have a nice time, and see you all soon. Bye-bye for now.